Hey guys, today I'm going to talk a little bit about how profitable some counterfeit sellers are. Now, I would never sell counterfeit myself, but it is interesting to see that many people are successful online. And this is the biggest seller on Etsy. This person began, this particular account was January 30th. So he only had February, March, and March, and pretty much in those two months, he was able to sell 1,280 proxies for an average price of, let's say, $4 a proxy. So that's about $5,000 in two months, but he's been doing this for three years now. So per month, it's about $2,500 a month and times 36, He's made about $92,100 selling fake proxies on Etsy. Now, how do I know he's been very successful? He has inundated the Houston market. This level up proxy person had several other shops, right? You can see the favorite shop and you can see he has 155 items uh, depending on the card. These are all fake cards, by the way. And at least he is honest that they're fake because even the store name is proxy, right? Level up proxy. Now, what's interesting here is people are leaving reviews, but these are actual people with names and Facebook profiles. So he has 24 reviews, all five stars, because when you're trying to buy a Maze of If for $2, or a Sarah Sanctum for $4. The Sunken Ruin probably is going on discount soon, but he buys it mainly from the Chinese counterfeiters and then he resells them. This is also the person who is on Craigslist and on PicoTrade. This particular vendor, I chatted with him on PicoTrade one time and he was telling me how easy it was to dupe these casual players. Another reason, and I saved and screenshotted the text messages for a video later. PicoTrade has been behaving well, so I don't want to launch my anti-PicoTrade video because I think it's changing, and this was in the past, right? So the PicoTrade scam was very simple. You would send a fake card, and then a moderator would get involved. The moderator, of course, is not being paid in cash or have they don't have a salary, they're being paid in Puka points, so they don't really care. One of the options that or is most available to moderator is just give everyone more points. So that's what would happen is if I sent a fake card on Puka Trade and the person receiving card says it's fake, everyone would get points. I would get the points and then the person would get, quote, a refund. But that's not how currency works, right? You can't just make it up whenever you feel like it even if you're a moderator. And that's one of the pet peeves I've had. So since January 30th, he sold 1,280. He's been going on with different accounts. So he would be banned, uh, there, it would be reported, then he would create a new account. He would use the same profile pictures. As you can see, he's selling them at different prices, which is very unique because they cost five cents a print. So Karn Liberated is $6 because it is super quality. Dark Confidant is $3 because it's super quality. So he's selling, this guy ordered on average, I think he has at least 20,000 sales total between PicoTrade and Etsy and Craigslist. Uh, his Craigslist scam is very, very smart. He uses his girlfriend and the girlfriend pretends to be an ex-girlfriend and it's a girlfriend who's texting you, by the way, and I do have her phone number. And I did, the phone number is attached to a Facebook page. And yeah. So I have tracked down all of this and I was going to report it all. And I did report it to the Houston Magic Group uh, a few years back, but they don't like me. I don't like them. So I, I tried to help. They didn't want my help. So now they're getting hosed. Stores are getting hosed, players are getting hosed. I see fake cards in Houston all the time. It's pretty bad. Um, so it's likely that if something's double sleeved and someone's not willing to take it out of the double sleeve, yeah, it's probably a fake. So here you can see in Etsy, it, the dude has, 
he has done a very good job. I mean, every two months, he sells 1,280 of these cards. And his customers have all given him five-star reviews. He used to sell it on TCG Player. I, I don't think he does it anymore. And he does sell on eBay. And he doesn't... So the way that he calls it is... He calls it super quality proxy. So he's going to tell you up front this is a proxy. But that doesn't... The profit margins are just so huge. He, I've seen the order from him. Uh, he ordered around, I think, 10,000 or 40,000 cards. Somewhere between that range. The guy has just distributed and absolutely, absolutely destroyed many economies, including Houston's for Magic cards. You ask, why don't I buy vintage cards? I, it's not worth my time. I, yes, I can identify a fake. Yes, I know what a counterfeit looks like. But is it really worth my time? Like, Just think about how awkward it is, right? I take a card out. I don't... I uh, take out the double sleeves. I'm like, wait, this is fake. Do you know this is fake? Either the person knows it's fake and now it's going to lie and tell me lies or the person doesn't know it's fake and he does. He got scammed and I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of telling him, hey, you lost a lot of money, right? So I don't want to deal with that. Uh, but this guy, and it's an interesting business model. He's not the only one. You can make six figures selling fake magic cards easily in the U.S., that's what I wanted to say. I wanted to tell you that, that you can make a lot of money selling these fake cards. You can buy them in bulk in China from Shenzhen, five cents a piece, and then you go to America and then you sell it for uh, $2, free 50. I mean, look at the pricing on this. $3, $5 for a Mo, $5 for Horizon Canopy, uh, $3 for Ancestral Recall, 550 for a misty rainforest the guy has gotten so many he sold so much that he knows the actual demand for each of these cards he knows 550 someone will buy the misty rainforest but he knows that if he put 550 on breeding pool no one will buy that he knows that six dollars a mox diamond people will buy the mox diamond so it's interesting to study him he had before he was banned he had a different account and that account had something like ten thousand sales Right, this guy has been. Wait, how much is ten thousand? Yeah, that, that's, that makes sense. That's probably his main account. It's probably fifty thousand. He's doing twelve eighty in two months, so six hundred and forty sales a month, and fake proxies. And these proxies are costing him nothing to do. And more to the point, his customers are incredibly happy, and they actually are so happy to the point that they're going to attach their Facebook to the review. So I would, I remember seeing the original one and there was like hundreds of these people. I'm like, what, like, why would you, so let's say uh, Daryl Truffs, right? Great assortment of proxies. The ink was really dark on some of the blue cards. Overall, can't complain. So he bought 54 of them. Some of them by individual, some of by, I mean, it's pretty much a reseller. You see how recent this is? Item arrived quickly and as described, so Black Lotus from Bader, highest quality Magic the Gathering MTG proxy for casual and fun play. Good proxy for the card. Feels a little rough compared to the real thing, but in a case they are undistinguishable, the color, thickness, and bend are all good as well. Shipped in a timely manner and shop was very friendly and helpful. Thanks again. So, this dude is not from China. He's not from Canada. He's from Japan. And this is what I knew would happen. Let's say you had a Chinese seller. How is Wizard Coast going to stop them? Let's say you have a Japanese seller. How is Wizard Coast going to stop any of these sellers internationally? They barely can stop people. People can walk into their print shop, take entire foil wrap of their mythics and rares six to eight months beforehand then publish it online trying to sell it on craigslist and not get caught right they can spoil an entire set and not get caught how are they going to catch these people from japan right like like it doesn't make any sense like what would anyone do to stop him 
like you report his Etsy store, he's just going to make another one. It's so profitable that there's no way he can stop. He's getting twenty five hundred plus dollars a month in free money. So let's say his operating expense, including shipping, is about five hundred dollars. Let's say he uses the same shipping system I use, where it's like a dollar's stamps. He's still making two thousand dollars a month minimal on Etsy. He makes another two hundred selling. So what he does is he hires people as proxies for him, then he sends them the cards and those people pretend to be ex-girlfriends who uh, kicked out their boyfriends and now have this magic collection. Same dude, the dude is big. I mean, he's like got a mafia going on. Anyway, bye guys.